Doors open in 17 minutes. Okay. So We're just about to go on stage for a Moon Over Buffalo. It is a two act play that it is what is known as a door farce. So it's a lot of people coming and going, mistaken identities, people uh, acting crazy. There's a sword fight, there's chasing, there's romance. It's a little bit of everything. Last night was opening night. We had a full house and people were laughing from beginning to end. It was a great night. This is Buffalo, New York. It's like Scranton without the charm. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm also excited. Same, yeah, very excited. It's been almost a year of work for some people. You have to really be invested in it and really give a lot of, not just your time, but your heart and really believe in the importance of what this brings to our community. It's extremely rewarding to see all that hard work kind of come together and do a beautiful show. Please, sir, I want some more. <gasps> what? Community really is part of every type of theater. You are building community when you participate in a theatrical event, right? Because it takes a village to put on a show. What you see is the tip of the iceberg when you come to a show. There are so many people involved in getting this show to happen. And if you'd add everybody's work hours together, it would just be thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. You don't always have as many people as you'd like for every production, so everybody has to wear a lot of hats and pitch in where they're needed. Then it all comes together in the end. Looking semi Community theater in its the broadest sense is theater made by and for a specific community. So everyone who's creating it is a part of that community and the people who are consuming it are part of the community as well. It gives people an outlet to explore places and people that they don't necessarily encounter in everyday life. Oh, as a matter of fact, I was needing a boy. Good, then it's settled. One parochial apprentice. Three pounds, please. If you don't mind, cash upon liking, Mr. Bumble, cash upon liking. So it kind of expands everyone's worldview. It's just essential to every community. I actually work over at the Smeal College of Business. Uh, I'm uh, uh, the director of the MBA program and our doctorate program there. One of the things that I learned over the course of my career is how valuable theater is for everything that we do, especially in business. How to have a conversation with somebody, how to be extemporaneous in your speech, how to give a presentation, how to do public speaking. Um, acting has been such a huge part of that for me. George, you can't give up. What about all your fans? <laughs> My fans, fine. I'll call one, you call the other. <laughs> I really like coming here and seeing all my friends, talking with people. Um, it's also like a nice space because you get to really like just be who you want to be and because everyone here is a little weird <laughs> and quirky because everyone's a theater kid. I don't remember my life without theater. When I moved here in 1981, I had no idea the gem that was here, both in beautiful Michelin Theater, which is where ACT performs, in Altoona Community Theater. It's one of the best community theaters in the country. Altoona Community Theater is a community-based theater company that provides volunteer opportunities for actors, designers, artists, builders, kids, adults to get involved in theater. We have probably about 200 active volunteers. We have some people that are involved in nearly every show that we do. I have to tell them to take a break so they don't burn themselves out. But we have some people who come once every three or four years. There, some musical calls out to them and they feel the need to audition. I really think it is the friendships that come out of each show. You're building quite a little family. You're found family. ACT started actually in the 1920s. A private elocution teacher in Altoona named Dean Dreyfus had a dream, and she started a theater company. And it started out as the Altoona Little Theater and then became the Altoona Theater Guild. And then there was a growth spurt. There was a Chicago stock company that was traveling and had a gig in Lakemont Park, and they ran out of money. 
So the Chicago Stock Company was abandoned here, and they were like, hey, can we join you guys? And that's when they incorporated in 1948 as Altoona Community Theater. And we are celebrating 75 years. The celebration of our 75th anniversary is an original work written and directed by Karen Volpe. She's a longtime ACT volunteer. She's been a board member, she's been a director, she's been on stage, she's been backstage. So Karen is well versed in the history of ACT. The show itself is telling the history of ACT through songs and scenes from shows that we've produced in our 75 year history, but it's also about the community of ACT and the community that we're part of. You know, just give us some like interpretive news. Mine's so good. Be perfect. Tell me when you're ready. I was asked to write it and direct it. And I enjoy doing both, but I thought, how in the world do you approach that? Do you bring back people? Do you highlight certain shows, what shows? You know, we've done so many, hundreds of shows. What a great gift, George, to see what the world would have been like without The show is a very unique production for ACT. This is the first or all original production that I'm aware of that ACT has ever produced over at the Michelin. ACT is the star of this show. And I noticed there's a different vibe in rehearsals than, than usual. It's like celebratory. They are representing, they are standing in for everybody who has passed through ACT's door and been in the audience, been a patron, been on the stage, been backstage. They are just representing everybody and we're all celebrating. I hope they take away from this that ACT is a very joyous organization with a lot of heart, and I think they're gonna leave feeling really good. <laughs> there are hundreds of community theaters within Pennsylvania. So some community theaters have a home base, like Altoona Community Theater at the Mischler, and some community theaters are really mobile, and you'll see them doing their shows in churches or in community centers. So I'd say that's the biggest difference, is maybe the size of the group and where their performance spaces are. Our mission is to entertain, inspire, and foster a love of theatrical arts. Sock and Buskin is a community theater. We wanted to do community theater a little bit differently. To either join in the fight or take shelter like ours. Viva la revolution! Viva la revolution! Most of our shows have been murder mysteries, so interactive dinner theater. It's a more casual atmosphere than a traditional show, but it is staged very much like a traditional show, except that during the intermission portion, audience members get a chance to question the actors because, spoiler alert, there is a murder, so they get to question the suspects. The actors all walk around the tables to our audience members, and they get a chance to ask the actors questions and sort of interrogate them a little bit, and then we do the reveal after that. You can always hear people, oh, I knew that, or oh, I didn't catch that, as we reveal all the clues that they were given throughout the show. That's a really great way to introduce people to the idea of interactive theater because of course it's optional, but it does, and they can still enjoy the show without participating, but it gives them the opportunity if they would like it. We are a 100% uh, volunteer community theater. So everyone who is part of Sock and Buskin is doing it in their free time for the love of theater. We really wanted to gather up talent that wasn't just actors. We were looking for artists and builders and people that wanted to do lights and sound or choreography. We're a young group and we're still learning about what our volunteers and actors want, learning about what our community wants. So it's also a learning experience for us as well. Theater can be a lot of things to different people. For some people, it's there simply to entertain. For some people, it's a creative outlet for them. For some people, it's their support network. Community theater is so special because of the investment of 
of local people. And those who are participating in community theater are doing it because they really love and care about it. If you have a jaw behind a desk or, or that doesn't really re require a lot of creativity, it's very important that you have a creative outlet. And so if the theater is in your community, there's that outlet. Some people see theater as this inaccessible thing that is for a certain demographic of people, and we're trying to fight that stigma. Community theater is for everybody. I think any arts organization that operates on a community level adds to the fabric of that community by providing arts exposure that people maybe necessarily can't afford to travel to see in the bigger cities. When you see this house fill with people, you can see the smiles on their faces. You are, you're bringing joy to people who maybe had a really bad week or a really bad year. And to them, this is a moment where they can come and forget about that and they can come enjoy really great art with people from their community who are giving of themselves to pull everybody together, both in the audience and on the stage. You're making this connection between the two groups of people. I think when people see themselves represented in stories, then they feel part of something larger. Watch full episodes of Keystone Stories now on the PBS app.